now unique event, which took place on the 25th of March at the Playhouse Theatre in London, which is the one right down the bottom, which no one says, oh, God, there's a theatre here. And there we join an expectant audience. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, BBC Radio 2 and Celador Productions welcome you to the Playhouse Theatre for a very special evening. Please welcome your producer, Dirk Maggs. Good evening and welcome to the Playhouse for this most illustrious occasion. We're playing this goon show, the first since 1972, in front of a very distinguished audience. It's wonderful to have you here, and we're here to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the goon show and the joy that Spike Milligan, Peter Sellers, Harry Seacombe, and in its early years, Michael Benteen gave to the world. It's not because we can't think of anything better to do than revive a load of 50-year-old jokes. <laughs> but there's nothing to touch the best of the goons, and a lot of the best was lost when the BBC destroyed the early recordings. Generations are growing up today aware of the Goon Show, but with no idea what it means except that it's old and therefore it must be boring. Maybe that's why there's so much comedy around these days and so little fun. We think it's time for a wake-up call. There are many absent friends I could mention tonight, but I'm certain Peter, Michael, Ray, the many wonderful producers and musicians are here with us in spirit tonight. And as for those who wanted to come, but who were prevented by distance or the dreaded lurgy, I would like you to send a big hand to Sir Spike and Sir Harry. Yeah. I'd like to say a few thank yous. Um, my first thank you, of course, is to Spike. I first spoke to Spike about this idea ten years ago when we did the Marx Brothers shows, Flywheel, Shyster and Flywheel, and Spike appeared on two shows, which was such a thrill for me. I think I was the last producer to, to work with Spike at the Paris, and at that time Spike and I talked about the early Goon Show scripts and the chance of doing this. It took ten years to get to this point. And at Norma, Norma Farns' agent, who's been wonderful, and both Spike and Norma have given this their unfailing support, and I'd just like to thank them very much for that. Nobody can replace the Goons. You have to think of this as a genetically engineered tribute band. <laughs> Everyone is very excited. So to warm us all up on stage and in the theatre, here is a reminder of what it's all about. to march with a Marilyn Monroe sway. You've got to rock and roll with your old kit bag, but you mustn't ever mention her name in the mess. And if you want to know the title of this number, it's a major Dennis Bond of rock and roll called Rumba. <laughs> and when I hear the chink of money, that is good news. It drives away the blood rock and roll called Blues. I'm a bit dead on nothing, Captain. No, no, don't be frightened. 
All right then. I'll just put a match to it and... Such a spy! <laughs> you did it, me! Final hole. In tongue, in tongue, in tongue, in tongue, in tongue, in life, oh, keep up, lamp. In tongue, in tongue, in tongue, in life, oh, in life, oh, keep up, lamp. In tongue, in tongue, in tongue, in tongue, in tongue, in life, oh, lad. In tongue, in tongue, in tongue, in life, oh, in life, oh, lad. In tongue, in tongue, in tongue, in tongue, in tongue, in life, oh, in tongue, in tongue, it all now. In tongue, in life, oh, in tongue, in tongue, in tongue, in tongue, in. Don't write them like that anymore, folks. <laughs> and so I've tried walking sideways and walking through the front. But people just look at me and say, you're just a publicity stunt. So I'm walking backwards, but peace of us are to prove that I love you. Lizzie, take a bow. Lizzie Glassborough, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Andrew Seacombe. Yeah. Mr. John Glover. Yeah. Christopher Timothy, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And some other bloke. Jeff Owens. Jeff Owens. And please, a very, very big hand for the very wonderful John Wilson and his orchestra. I believe, Christopher, we have some messages. Yes, yes, we do have a number. And a letter of complaint from David Beckham asking why he wasn't approached to play Blue Bottle. <laughs> Here's a nice one. It's good luck with the show and I hope it from the captain of the Mir space station. <laughs> oh, and Andy, there's one here from your dad. It's got uh, Sir Ned and Lady Seagoon on the letter here, but I can't read his writing. Can you decipher it? Let's have a look. Ah, oh, yes. It says... <laughs> <laughs> and finally, a very special greeting from Spike himself. It reads, two pints of semi-skimmed, half a dozen eggs, and a picture frame of the knighthood. Uh, Chris, Chris, uh, other side, mate, other side. Oh, of course. <laughs> Spike sends his warmest regards and wishes us the very best of luck. We are going to need it. <laughs> right, the time-honoured way of starting a programme... ...changed a bit. So if the lads in the mobile could put down their beers, wind up the elastic in the wax cylinder machine, we're going ahead in... Ten. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> this is the BBC. It's no use coming to us with your hard luck stories. <laughs> we present Andrew Seacombe, John Glover and Geoffrey Holland in a special 50th anniversary celebration of The Goon Show. Goon again! <laughs> Folks, it is I, handsome son of Ned Seagorn. You can tell this isn't television, can't you? <laughs> Presenting the best of the early goon shows. Immortal Milligan material unheard since England led the way in loose woolen underwear, cold cocoa consumption, and brown Windsor soup. <laughs> Tonight, we begin with... The 
the story of civilization. In the dark vastness before time, this planet we know as Earth was a molten mass of red, hot lava. But as time passed, life appeared, and living in the trees, we find primitive man. Then came the day when man cautiously dropped to the earth beneath, which was still red hot. Almost immediately, boots were invented. Soon men were roaming the earth in wild, savage bands. Before long, we find the first signs of civilization as we know it today. Listen to me. Every time you kill wild deer, you give me half. Oh. Give you half? Or why? Or else me bang you on head with a club like this. Okay, me give you half. And so, taxation was born. The next problem was the taming of the wild horses which roamed the plains. Ugg the wily, son of Mock the Hunter, was the first man to leap suddenly upon the back of one of these wild stallions. It's all in the genes, you know. 43 BC and the Roman legions invade Britain bringing with them the civilizing influences of the Roman Empire. Yes, I, Caesar, will bend these rough barbaric Britons to our way of life. 41 BC, and Caesar returns in triumph to Rome. I pay, Caesar. Speak to us, O conqueror of Britain. Right, hold me pen of the chips there, Marcus. Might not tell these geezers all about it. <laughs> with him he brought the spoils of war, captive Britons. But though these barbarians were thrown to the lions, they fought savagely. Just, just, just a minute, fellas. Shouldn't we be fighting the lions? Oh. <laughs> the year 603, and once again Britain was threatened with invasion, this time by the dreaded Vikings. King Ethelbert rallied his subjects for the defence of their country. Oh, men. Have no fear, have no fear. I, Ethelbert, your king, will lead you. I, Ethelbert, your king, will raise my sword in the forefront of your ranks. <laughs> I, Ethelbert, your king, will... The Vikings are coming! I, Ethelbert, your king, will now abdicate. <laughs> there were many claimants to the vacant throne, but finally it passed to a weakling. Cuthbert the First, known as Cuthbert the Scrawny. <laughs> he was crowned at Axminster Abbey. First, the chain of office was placed around his thin neck, and then the Archbishop lowered the great hundred pound gold crown onto his head. I crown thee Cuthbert the First. <laughs> Call Cuthbert the Second. Yes, being a king in those days was a hazardous calling. Many attempts were made upon their lives, often by poisoning, and this brought into being the strange profession of food tasters. The first of these was Elfric, employed by King Henbert II. One day, King Henbert did call in Elfric and did say, Elfric, taste this food before I eat, lest it be poisoned. And Elfric did taste the meal, and immediately, with a great cry of anguish, did fall upon the floor. And his legs did curl up behind his ears, and his eyes did cross, and his hair did turn green and fall out in great handfuls. And the king, looking down, did say, Elfric, what is it? And Elfric did reply, I think the spuds are underdone. <laughs> Several centuries later came... Several centuries later came Britain's darkest hour. No, he. Half past four in the morning. <laughs> and so we bring you a story of adventure, espionage, intrigue, daring, stamp collecting, fretwork, and open cast mining. Based on the film Ealing Broadway Melody of 1876. 
From the pen of Alice Groundsfoot Pules. Adapted for carrier pigeon by Hermes Tram Pleasure. The story of the Spanish Armada. <laughs> Here to tell you this heroic tale is that great poet and tragedian, William McGoonagall. Hello! T'was in the year 15... And in the month of June, that the Spaniards sailed for England to meet their dreadful doom. But there on Plymouth Hollow, my lads, our sailors played at bowls. They swore to die with their boots on, for their socks were full of holes. <laughs> the first to spot the Spanish fleet was a lonely British ship. Twas Admiral Bloodlock sailing back from another smuggling trip. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, powerful stuff, this organic vindaloo. <laughs> oh. 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 Burson, see the lads get double helpings if the wind drops, would you? <laughs> Excuse me, are you Admiral Bloodnock? Do I owe you money? No. In that case, I am. I am Captain Seagull. Welcome aboard the good ship Venus. Who is that strangely dressed knave? <laughs> Filthy swine. Who is that strangely dressed knave aloft in the crow's nest? Abel Seaman Eccles. Why is he wearing a cloth cap, morning coat, fishnet stockings and a loincloth? You don't think we'd let him go up there naked, do you? <laughs> but... But what exactly is he doing? He keeps a record of the weather. Oh, I see. Eccles? Oh. Eccles, for heaven's sake, stop playing that blasted record of the weather. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Admiral Bloodnock, sir. Yes, Captain Seagood. I have just spotted some things on the horizon. What are they? Well, sir, they're made of wood. Sharp at one end and blunt at the other. <laughs> And they're floating on the water. They have sails and sailors on board. And yes, yes, yes. But what are they? I, I think they're ships. Captain Seagull, I believe you're right. Well, what flag are they flying? A white one with a large onion on it. Spaniards. <laughs> Shatter me shins. Spaniards in the English Channel. Where the blazes did they come from? Hand me that book, sir. Thank you. You are... Yes. Ah, Spaniards. They come from Spain, sir. You mean they're foreigners? <laughs> How many ships have they? Three hundred, sir. Three hundred. And we have one. Three hundred to one. Sigurd? Yes, sir. We're outnumbered. <laughs> we must try to get away. Yes, sir. Do you think there's any chance of showing him a clean pair of heels? Not with this filthy mob, no. <laughs> I shall have to do what I've never done before. What's that? I'm still up here. <laughs> Terrific. But, Bloodnock, you're a coward. You're calling me a coward? Yes. You surprised me. Why? I didn't know you knew. <laughs> we need to get word to the government of the Spanish fleet. Aye, aye, sir. I'll find a volunteer to take the message. I had you call, my captain. I had you call. Ablesemanblue.buckle.com <laughs> Ah! Hello, everybody. <laughs> Volunteering for duty. Steps forward, salutes smartly, straightens Mum's tea cosy on head. You're too young to go, oh, badly drawn cabin boy. No, I'm not. I'm nearly three. Three? Good heavens. How do you manage to join the Navy? I lied about my age. I told him I was four. <laughs> Clever, laddo. Here, take this message. Right. Farewell, I say. Farewell. This deed I will do for the British flag. Through thick and thin, this message I will bear. Through hell and high water for my country. I will suffer tortures untold for the cause. I will die. Farewell. <laughs> Gad, what a hero he is. 
Maybe I'll wait till it stops raining. <laughs> Here, lad, just slip into this metal tube and we'll have you in England in no time. All right, then. <laughs> Here, Captain, how is this going to get me to England? Dash it! Missed! It's no good, Seagoon. You'll have to take the rowing boat and get word to London yourself. Aye, aye, sir. And now, on a more serious note... Thank you. Time for the ship's harmonica player to pipe up the old grog. Everybody around the back. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Harry Pitch. I'll take it. For me, Mr. Timothy, what does it say? Heard your harmonica playing What a Fool I Was to Worry. Oh, how nice. Who is it from? Max Geldray. <laughs> And so the hurried message was sent to the Houses of Parliament. <laughs> and there the messenger did arrive, not at twenty-two, but at twenty past five. <laughs> what about the workers? <laughs> Mr. Prime Minister, sire. Yes. A messenger approaches. And passes. <laughs> but wait. Wait, Jim, he returns. <laughs> but not for long. <laughs> uh, we must stop him somehow. Ah, I have it. Close that far door. Ready, hold him. Where's he gone? Is there a doctor in the house? Where did that voice come from? Here, inside my throat. <laughs> no, I mean, where are you? Up here in the public gallery. Come down here at once. Right. <laughs> ah. Captain Seagull reporting, sir. I have ridden through winter's icy breath. I have ridden in the face of death. I have ridden through snow and hail to deliver this message to you without fail. I have ridden since early December. But what's the message? I can't remember. <laughs> oh, yes, the message. The armada of the spanet sweeps o'er the foam. Like the golden eagle rising from its sky-bound nest swoops down intent on innocent lamb and forbearing all thoughts of mercy or grace engages with murderous claws his unsuspecting prey. 
Anything else? <laughs> yes, next week I'm appearing at the Hackney Empire. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Members of Parliament, this man claims that a Spanish armada is approaching our island. Hey. Spanish. Uh. Armada? Spanish Armada Spanish Armada Stop this insane panic If only there was some way of knowing what their plans are. There is, Captain Seagull. He wants you to become the famous Spanish Admiral, Manuelo Don Pedro, and infiltrate the court of King Philippe. But I look nothing like him. Not yet, Jim. Here, this is the address of a plastic surgeon. A plastic surgeon in 16th century England? No, in East Finchley. <laughs> but, but how am I supposed to get across town in the rush hour? Well, you have an orchestra, don't you? Of course. Silly me. Oh. <laughs> Dr. Thin? I am. My name is Seagull. Ah, the fabled son of Ned. I've been expecting you. Are you a plastic surgeon? No, I'm flesh and bone like everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, would you change the shape of my face? I should consider it a public duty. <laughs> Come in, come in. Thank you. Sigun, did you wipe your feet? Yes. Then what's all this mud on the floor? Oh, that came off my shoes. I see. <laughs> now, Doctor, what is your fee? At the current European rate of exchange, 200 angry French farmers. <laughs> Do you have the farmers? Got 500 on me. No, oh, that's all right. I'll keep the change. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Doctor, when can you operate? Immediately. I'll call my assistant. Nurse? All right, easy to get it Sigun, let me present the former EC Commissioner for Hair Oil and inventor of the genetically modified aluminium scooter, Count Jim Puff Daddy oh. Moriarty. Oh. Nurse, prepare for a facial alteration. Couldn't you do me first? I meant you. <laughs> I'm afraid we'll have to do a menlatus operastica marcillus fascio reparation with a semotroxide trepanning of the lobal sternum. Is that dangerous? No, just difficult to say. <laughs> Nervous? Well, uh, yes. You see, this is the first time I've had anything to do with facial surgery. Really? <laughs> you, you don't mean this is your first case? Oh, no, no, no. But it might well be my first successful one. <laughs> yes, nurse? The instruments are ready. Splendid. I'll just see if they're all right. <laughs> oh, dear. Have you boiled these instruments? Yes, Doctor. You swine! Ah! You know I like them fried. I love you, Nick. Give me another one. <laughs> no ad living, please. Sigun, open your mouth. Ah. Now swallow that. Ooh. What was it? Cigarette ash. I didn't want to drop it on the carpet. <laughs> now just lie down on the table, will you, and tell me what sort of face you want. A leader of men. Handsome. Cultured. Something like, what's his name? The Spanish Admiral Manuelo Don Pedro. Can you do that? Manuelo Don Pedro. My dear Sigun, I can make you look exactly like him. Nurse, uh, oh. wheel the instrument trolley over here. Yes, darling. 
Doctor, I, I, I hope you know what you're doing with all those things. Know what I'm doing? <laughs> right, nurse. Oh. Sharp thing with handle. Sharp thing with handle. Ow! Long thing with knob and squiggly top. A long thing with knob and squiggly top. Oh! Thin pointed thing with hole in one end and cotton threaded through. Ow! Ah! <laughs> right, all done. Finished? Yes. Nurse, hand me that mirror. It's a mirror. There, Seagull. What do you think of that? Wonderful. Yes, I use it for shaving, you know. You know? <laughs> yes, of course, it's getting a bit blunt now. In fact, you might throw it in the dustbin as you go out, would you? But, but what about my face? Oh, I should throw it in the dustbin as well. No, no, I, I mean my face. It's incredible. You've made me the living image of Manuelo Don Pedro. Thank you, Doctor. Good night. Good night, Seagull. Good night, Seagull. I look exactly like Manuela Don Pedro. Now I can sneak into the Spanish court without attracting attention. Extra, extra, Manuela Don Pedro wanted for murder. Famous Admiral banning from Spain for life. Ah! Let me in! Stop the thing! Let me in! Ah! And oh, while Seagoon cried, the band did play, and Lance Ellington sang for his old dad, Ray. <laughs> The sky was blue and high above The moon was new and so was love This little heart of mine was singing Love, oh, where can you be? You came at last, love had its day That day it passed, you've gone away This little heart of mine was singing Love, oh, come back to me I remember every little thing you used to do I'm so lonely Every road I walked along, I walked along with you No wonder I'm so lonely The sky was blue, the night was cold The moon was new, but love was old And while I'm waiting here, this heart of mine was singing Love will come back to me Was singing like that that drove his lover away in the first place, folks. Shut up, Eggles! Shut up, Eggles! Shut up! And so brave Captain Seagoon returned to Parliament, his tail between his legs. Another botched operation. <laughs> Gentlemen, our spying mission has failed, but there's no need to panic. How far away is the Spanish fleet now? Seventeen miles. Seventeen miles. <laughs> Seventeen 
15 miles out of sea, that gives me a wonderful idea. What? We must start building some ships. Oh, come now, let's not go mad. <laughs> These things have to be discussed. I agree. Now, if these... Spa- I don't know what Fred Henry's doing in here. Now, if these Spaniards <laughs> should start firing at us, then we can take it that they are hostile. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. And in that case, the warning beacon must be lit. We must dispatch some cavalry at once to warn the official beacon lighter. Hi, sir. I'll send the king's horse. Yes, and send the king's rider as well. <laughs> and oh, and so the cavalry set off by way of Pina and rode all night, save a stop for dinner which I would describe to you in all its courses, only I can't hear myself speak for these blasted horses! Thank you! (laughs) And all, and they made good speed all along the way, for the colonel rode a piebald and the captain rode a bay, and the piebald was a fast horse, and the bay a cert stone bunker. But alas for Captain Seagoon, who rode a chestnut, well, not so much a chestnut as a conquer. <laughs> so on and on our gallant band ride ahead until they reach the district where the beacon lighter reside. Dead. He lives somewhere near here, Colonel Fumble. Right, Seagoon, we'll try this place. Dismount and knock on the door. I'll hold your conquer. <laughs> Swine! might have warmed your hands first. I can't hear a word. They said there's somebody knocking at the door, Henry. Minnie? What? I can't hear what you're saying. Oh, I'm going to lose my learning if I carry on. Oh, dear. They <laughs> said there's somebody knocking at the door. No, it's no good. I can't hear what she's saying. Oh. Just a minute, Minnie. Oh. Just a minute. Oh. Oh, good evening, sir. Sorry could to Could you, you stop knocking a moment, only I can't hear what this <laughs> man is doing trying to tell me. <laughs> Minnie? Yes, Henry? What was it you were saying? <laughs> I said there's somebody knocking at the door. No, there isn't. <laughs> Yes, I know, but I stopped them. (laughs) What for? Well, I couldn't hear what you were saying. (laughs) Well, now we've started at that. It's all right for them to start knocking again. Right. I'll tell them. Good night, Minnie. Good night, Here, sir. Was that you knocking again? <laughs> yes. Well, you see, I've, I've answered the door to you once. Tell him to hurry up. Look, this is urgent. Could you tell us where the beacon lighter lives? Mm, oh, yes. Number 18A Gallows Lane. 18A Gallows Lane. Thank you, friend. Oh, you. Man, to horse! Wheels on fire, <laughs> rolling down the road. <laughs> oh, idiot. Is 
is this? 18A Gallows Lane. It is. <laughs> I would speak with the official beacon lighter. Oh, wait a minute, please. Minnie! Don't come in. I've taken my legs off. <laughs> what is it? This gentleman wants the beacon lighter. Oh, I do. Ellington, call the beacon lighter. 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 Beacon lighter? Somebody wants you. Thank you, Min. <laughs> Are you the beacon lighter? Yes. <laughs> then stand by to light the beacon. The armada approaches the coast. <laughs> light the beacon? Minnie? Yeah. Where are the matches? <laughs> Albert's got them. Albert! 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 Albert, buddy, where are you? Why doesn't he answer? He's in Africa. <laughs> there! Well, you'd better shout a bit louder. Albert! <laughs> yes? <laughs> Is that Albert in Africa? Yes? Hello, Corley. Your shout is up. Do you require a further three minutes shouting? Mm, yes. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Albert! What? Have uh, you got the matches? Yes! Well, hand them to me at once. I'll send in my phone. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Here you are, Henry. Colonel! Listen, the Spaniards have opened fire! Mr. Crun, give the order to light the beacon. Oh, um, right, right. Men, men, light, 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 dear. Um, no, no, light. Don't see the Spaniards open fire, and this did make Admiral Bloodnock truly perspire. On every Spanish ship, the guns did make loud noises, and every deck resounded to the sound of Spanish voices. <laughs> Admirala, there is a greater storm a blowing upper. Hey, you know what? I'm worried about my Spanish Amada. Why uh? <laughs> She's run off and left my Spanish Afada. <laughs> Who says these shows are dated? <laughs> Caramba! Ole! <laughs> if only we are knew what defense the English were a planning. We will, the Doc. <laughs> we have spy aboard the, the flag of ship. Suppose they are catcher him. Impossible! Admiral Budnock! Seagull, welcome back. What's going on? We've caught a spy! Let go of me, English pig dogs! <laughs> <laughs> Narrow's eyes strikes heroic pose. Pulls dungaree crotch to trendy knee high position. Guy! <laughs> New elastic. Now, <laughs> well, uh, see here, bottle, my good man. Are you going to come quietly? Yes. Right, I'll take my earplugs out then. <laughs> There's nothing for it. We'll have to court martial him. Abel Seaman Blue Bottle, you are charged with being a secret agent for the Court of Spain. In order to give you a fair trial, the court will appoint an interpreter. Oh, I'm an interpreter. You are an interpreter, Eccles? What language do you speak? Uh, English. Oh, what a stroke of luck. <laughs> Go on, then, say something in English. Oh, uh, um, oh, I can't think of anything offhand. 
Does the prisoner have something to say? Yes. Anything else? No. Thank you. <laughs> has the court reached a decision? No, we're tired and we want to go home. <laughs> but the verdict, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Right, the court is not guilty. And the prisoner... No, Joe, not guilty. You're... Hooray! <laughs> But in desperate times like these, Britons do not just stand still and freeze. Each one lends a willing hand for the defense of his beloved land. And such a one was the beacon lighter, who stood by his pile of wood and gave instructions as quickly as he could. Uh, light thing. Um, now take the match and... One British ship fought the Spaniards alone, though the shot crashed around them, causing many a moan. And as a large cannonball missed Seagull by inches, he turned to his chief and said, Bitch, my other bridges! Oh, yes, Cassis. These Spaniards are overpowering us. I know, sir. It's all that garlic they eat. <laughs> Never mind. I'll teach them a lesson. Two and two are far, you Spanish devils. <laughs> An island is a piece of land entirely surrounded by water, you rotten bullfighting scoundrels. Oh. Oh, well done, Admiral Bloodnock. You'll go down in history. I did. I went down in geometry and physics as well. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> But I'm not afraid of them. I've already singed the King of Spain's beard. You have? Yes. I was a lather boy in a Madrid barber shop, you know. You worked in Spain? I say, did you pick up the Spanish linger? No, but I got a nasty dose of the German measles. <laughs> no, I say. Look, sir. Oh. Not I... yet, you fool. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I say, sir, look. There's the Spanish flagship. Yes, flying the flag of a named Admiral Ian de Vinda. It is? Sir, did you know that Ian de Vinda is secretly a notorious German traitor by the name of Howard March? You mean... Yes, Howard March is that dog Ian de Vinda. The hound in the wagon tail. Oh, oh, God. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Extraordinary. Well, oh, 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 scuttle me galley cooks. Half me rigging shot away. <laughs> and the ship's not much better either. <laughs> Isn't there any sign of relief force yet? I'll ask the lookout. Look out! Why, what's coming? <laughs> You! Look out! Can you see ahead? I can see yours. <laughs> no, no, what can you see in front of us? Oh, in front of us. Oh, the difficult one. Oh, wow, oh, oh, where's my telescope? Oh, oh wrong end. No, no. What can I see in... Oh, yes, I can see... Um, what? Water. Soon. And what's on the starboard side? Water. And on the port side? Water. And, and what's behind us? All together, folks. Water! Good grief! Gentlemen! What's the matter? What's the matter? What's the matter? What's the matter? We're at sea! Great Scott! <laughs> this has upset my plans! Oh! 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 Oh. Why didn't you climb down the rigging? Oh, my, it's not for me to reason why. <laughs> it is for me to do and, um, well, what's the word? Um, no, um, no, 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 Simon Eccles. Yeah? You mean, it is not for me to reason why. It is for me to do and... <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't say it, but he done it pretty good. The Spanish marksmen have shot their own spy. We must return their fire. Oh, can't we keep it for all the week? It's getting chilly at night. <laughs> <laughs> now stop that, Echoes, at once. Stop it. 
Load the cannon. I got a lot of. Take aim. I got aim. Fire! <laughs> Oh, them Spaniards. That's a dirty trick. What? They're using rubber boats. <laughs> <laughs> this Spanish admiral doesn't frighten me. I'll make things hot for him. Echoes, oh. put his dinner in the oven. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait. Admiral Budnock, look. What? The English fleet's arrived. We're rescued. Hooray! 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 Oh. And so victory came to England and Bloodnock's gallant men. The Spaniards fled towards Biscay Bay and peace returned again. Last chance, folks. <laughs> <laughs> then the tumult and the shouting died and silence did on Britain lie. And every voice was quiet and still, save one which was heard to cry. Light the beacon! <laughs> That was Goon Again, a recorded program celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Goons. Featuring Andrew Seacombe, Jeffrey Holland and John Glover in parts originally played by Peter Sellers, Harry Seacombe and Spike Milligan. The announcer was Christopher Timothy. The show featured Lance Ellington and Harry Pitch. The orchestra conducted by John Wilson. The strip was by Spike Milligan and Larry Stevens. Edited by Paul Manette and Brian Leverson. The broadcast assistant was Trudy Stevens and the producer, Dirk Mag. Goon Again is a Senator production for BBC Radio 2. and Lance Ellington. And for our cast, Christopher Timothy, Jeffrey Holland, John Glover, and Son of Ned.